Andrew McCarthy is interested in more than just a good... Listen, he's having no trouble... Could you, could you say it again? <laughs> he fell in the white... Run your screen. said earlier, Steve, run the feet. It's simple for simple. program on therapeutic fiber. Head to Broadway by way of ball boxing hot. Good morning, my darlings, and welcome to Good Morning, Darlings. I'm your host, Miss Iridescent, and Lana Del Rey's pussy tastes like Pepsi Cola, but mine tastes like spoiled milk. I'm super excited. So a little behind the scenes tea, because you know, I love spoiling the magic of Disney. Um, you know, we film these like, or at least I try to film these a week in advance, because uh, I'm an editor and i like to have off time in case something happens well last week i got motherfucking sick so whoever got me sick and suck a big old bag of dead dicks because like i was over it you can still hear my voice is slightly fucked up but it's sexy i sound like a cartoony version of kathleen turner like if you'd never seen what she looks like but i look like her now which is big and kind of like angelica houston it's very suspicious but um yeah no so i'm getting over whatever's going around and it's fine um look bitch we got a sign eventually it'll cover this part but the fact that we've got a sign period like oh shit it's fine. We're good. <laughs> I ruined Christmas, but it's okay. Uh, you know, nothing but class. But I'm super excited. Next week is Thanksgiving, and I cannot wait to spend it with my family. I haven't seen them in a minute. Um... Because I don't like them. Could you imagine? No, um, I'm super excited. I love them so much. Um, to my cousin and my aunt who watch this... Why? <laughs> I would never tell these stories to you. And if you ever came to one of my shows or anytime I just got to talk shit on the mic, I don't know what I do, but yeah, y'all be knowing I'm a slut and it's wild as fuck. But yeah, I'm super excited for Thanksgiving. Um, I work in retail, so I'm not thrilled about the whole, they're like, you have Thanksgiving off. But then I work overnight. So I go in at 10 on Thanksgiving because technically that's, it's some bullshit. They used to have it where you couldn't clock in until 12.01, which was also some bullshit, just more tedious, and I got to sleep more. But um, I'm really excited. Um, I know I'm white, but my family knows how to cook, so I'm very happy about that. You'd be surprised. My great-grandma had salt when she was younger, so like that really made the difference. Um, my family just growing up, it was like tons of meat, like four different kinds of turkey, like any way you can think of, roasted, barbecued, fried, regular. It was just wild. And then my great-grandma, bless her heart, would always make a turkey just in case we needed more. But there was always so much food. It was wild. And then all the sides. But I literally get turkey, mashed potatoes, and bread. And that's it. Because I'm picky as fuck. And stuffing has onions. And I don't like onions. I don't like vegetables. We know this. I didn't get to this size from eating healthy. But I really think that my aversion to vegetables is because I watched VeggieTales when I was younger. Because fucking Bob and Larry over there singing about songs, trying to find his motherfucking hairbrush. And I'm trying to help him find it too, so I can't eat him. Like, ugh. But yeah, no, it's wild. I'm excited. Speaking of excited, <gasps> our guest today is iconic and stunning and part of their own YouTube channel. And is a comedy icon and a local celebrity and a non-local celebrity. And I was so nervous whenever I asked because I have a list. Just so y'all, I have a list. And she was one of the people on the original part of the list. And I'm still working through it. And thankfully, everyone I've asked has said yes, which means they have horrible standards. So I'm so excited. But yeah, let me get our guest. <gasps> Miss Jonah E. Hey, everybody. 
Hi, mama. How are you, gorgeous? Oh my gosh, you are gorgeous. Thank you I so feel much. underdressed, dude. You look stunning. Your hair is done. Yeah, Mine's girl. fake. You're good. Yeah. Whatever little pieces I got left. Ugly people <laughs> have to wear sequins. Just remember that. Girl, it's your costumes are always on point. Thank you. I made this and then my friend made the gloves because I can't do oh this my gosh. part. But yeah. style me for the Oscars. Baby. Let's trust. put it in the universe. Okay. Okay. Oh my goodness! So how have you been? Good. It's been a minute since I've seen you. Yes, I think uh, the last time I think I saw you was it was at Birdo's birthday. Birdo's I think. birthday. Or no, the, uh, yeah, something like that. There was a, Birdo had a show at the Elbow Room, and we were just kikiing. We were just totally, and I was like, "Bitch, why are you beautiful without all this?" Thank shit you on? so much. No. <laughs> uh. Uh, oh my god, bitch, I wish. Trust, no, if I could look really. like that, if I had real talent, I wouldn't have to look like this. <laughs> Shut Ugh. up. I love it. No, you looked so beautiful outside of all this. So but much. then with all this too, girl, slain. I got ready in 15 minutes today. Stop. Yeah, I made another I made another costume. I got off work at 7. I made a costume. And then I was like, I can make gloves out of this rhinestone fabric, which I'll show you later. Yeah, immediately. Or, well, no, I was like, I can do this. Or I can take an hour on my makeup. And I finished the gloves. And I'm like, okay, we can get ready in like 15 okay, minutes. Okay, bitch knows how to prioritize. And then when I got to the gig, we did, I did a show. I did Brunch at Paramore. Catch well, you me. You know, just one thing. Unless I get fired. In that case, um, I guess don't come see me. But I, <laughs> <laughs> I'll i be there on the 27th. <laughs> uh, allegedly. Um, but no, so my friend was there. And I was like, fix me. Fix me. And so she touched it. But oh, you look Great. so beautiful. Thank you. This is uh, just yeah, just a little something that just happened. A little something a little. with that lash. You know, girl, dude, it's okay. I work from home now. Okay. So I don't put makeup on every day like I used to. And my fucking eyes were irritating the heck out of me today. Oh, yeah. Can we cuss? I'm so sorry. Yes, fuck. Okay. Motherfucker. Oh, fuck bitch, shit. Dick pig. Gosh, yeah. Blit. Fucking pussy motherfucker. Nobody's sponsoring okay. this bullshit. Just, <laughs> <laughs> bitch, I'm sponsoring this. We can curse. She fucking said, my next guest has no standards. Everybody, Chona. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, she's here. I mean, she's available. Come on, let's get. I mean, my schedule was a little open. <laughs> So what was it that I'd go to the opening of an envelope? <laughs> <laughs> Baby, trust. Yeah, let's get real. Oh, my God. I'm like, open a Lunchable. Um, <laughs> I so what it. have you been up to? What are you working on? Well, okay. So right now I am not doing any stand-up shows at the moment because I'm working fully dedicating my time on the Bean and Cheese Med live sketch comedy show that we're Avail doing on, on YouTube. YouTube. I actually will put the link in the bio because yes. it's so hilarious. Thank you. But I was watching. I was skimming through it because I... I try to watch YouTube and then I fall Stop, asleep. Let's get rum. That's boring. No, I'm bitch. Sorry. I loved it because I, it was literally, it was the part where you and Jessica Duono, AJ Rivas, love you. You're also on the list and you should come here. But like, AJ, ugh, I'm wild. here. Yeah. First, you know, just, I want to interview all of y'all. I love it. Figure the logistics dope. for that. Yes. But no, y'all as the, um, the, um, you're cooking. The lunch ladies. Yes. We were bitch. lunch ladies. Y'all's characterization is what? I'm a big, th I have a theater background. So like y'all acting, y'all are so Good. Thank you. Well, I have a theater background as well, so that's that's. Uh, it's so much fun to be able to have to read scripts and memorize lines again. See, like, oh, I'm obsessed I love with it. That. But it's what it's like. Ev oh, okay, everyone who's okay. ever been on a stage is like, I can act. Real quick. I know how to act, but they don't like. And then it, you're like, it really is a learned skill. Just because you can go up and talk or do stand up yeah. and stuff doesn't necessarily mean that you can translates. Act. Yeah, that's true. And y'all actually act. We can act. We can act, honey. Uh, dancing routines, probably more AJ's, you know, thing. Um, I mean, I'll try my best. Just a little one, two step. Just a little, you know, a little shuffle. A little, little shimmy. The yeah, I'll do a little cumbia. Baby, Real that's quick. where I learned how to dance. At the quince? Yeah, that's what, because I, I was standing in a quince my first time ever. And <gasps> how nobody was that? told It was great. No one told well, us Well, yeah, because you have a fucking routine and everything that you got to learn. The day of. Because no what? one, yeah, they didn't tell us. Okay, they weren't prepared, honey. Nope. They weren't prepared. It because was wild. We, we practiced six weeks in advance, at least eight weeks in advance. If See, you're the, I mean, it was cute. it was lovely venue. The food was good. I don't remember much. It was very calm. Yeah. Um, but it was it was one of those ritzy ones. So like, oh, you know, like the, the Royal cir Palace the on the south side. tables. <laughs> well, no, those small rooms where I don't remember where it is, but it's in San Antonio. You go up like stairs, like these, like outdoor. It's this building where it's on the second floor. Would I don't know what it is. This was when I was in like high school, which was a minute ago. Yeah. yeah. But um, no, it was like. Fancy, and then I went to one of the more down home ones, and which that those are fucking those go lit. off. 
I live. Those go off. I was talking to Michelle uh, when she was here about yeah. how if the carne Michelle asada is mm. in the um, igloo coolers, you know it's going to be like the food's going to be bomb as fuck. That's funny that you say, <laughs> that's funny that you say that because you know you're going to a bougie ass quinceañera when their servers are serving you. Okay. But you know that it's going to get down when they're having carne guisada and it's the tias that are serving And some you random lady comes, mijo, did you eat? <laughs> you yes. know, And go, you're like, go you eat. still have carne guisada on your face, but they want to give you another oh, plate. Oh. Those quinceañeras go hot. Y'all need to invite me. Book me. I'll come do some bullshit at a quince. Seriously. <laughs> We're bookable. Baby. Dude, it's funny because I've gotten booked for a couple quinceañeras. I've done a few quinceañeras before, probably two. Let's get real. And it's not the quinceañera that's... And they're like, my daughter is such a big fan, Choni. E. I just love it. And so then I go up there and I start performing my parodies. And she's just standing there with her, her like, what do they call it? The, the quince entourage, whatever you say. Okay. And they're like this. The fuck is this? Okay. Old ass tia doing fucking singing hip hop. And then their moms and the tias are all... So it's really just for the mom. Of the quinceanera. Who, whoever's got the money. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, baby, pay, pay my husband. Okay. It's the old adage, you got a dollar, I got a talent. There it is. So how long have you been doing stand-up? Or so, comedy in general? Uh, comedy since... Comedy, where I've identified that I was funny was in elementary. But um, as far as like professionally, um, I've been doing it for years. But I just... I dart, I'm two years old in stand-up comedy world. Okay, I think I'm about that. Yeah, I'm about two years old. Damn, bitch, and you got famous so fast. You know, I think that it's it's so much more not the, the stand-up comedy. I think it's that I had uh, a following because of the parodies. Mm. And so when I was starting to sell tickets and doing shows, I'm like, I got to throw those in there because if not, it doesn't make sense. But then I started in learning in comedy. You know, you can't just fucking sing songs the entire time you're there. So I actually started working on a fucking bit. And so I, I'm... I'm excited about what I've developed over the past two years. It's hilarious. It Thanks, always cracks girl. Me. When I met her, she was dressed like Wednesday Adams, and I, I was this fucked up Elvira thing. And because <laughs> I was corseted and I had these old shoes that gave the the shoes gave me shin splints every time I wore them. Dude, well, they have the ankle shit, the strap. For well, the and ankle? it's fine, but it's because the angle of the platform is. They were like these oh, little yeah. platforms. It's such a weird angle. So every time I'd wear them, just like they weren't horribly uncomfortable but I'd always get shin splints and I was like first time meeting her I was like can you buckle my shoe please not realizing icon legend star ah, and she's like so yeah of course of course and I was like ah. that's you're like she's actually nice okay she's really nice. and then she threw me down the stairs I did and I said I'm first bitch oh my god yeah. no but it was it was great it was on a Halloween show at um Tequilas. Tequilas, it was fabulous. Yes. We had a good time. It was so fun. That was like actually when I was just starting, because I started doing comedy two years ago, but I wasn't doing a lot of shows. And then that year, that was 2021, right? I think so. It was last Halloween. Not yeah. this one, but the, the one before. Oh, and it was. it was probably like the third or fourth show I'd done that year. See, okay, I, doing comedy means we have done one show and then... That could mean like, okay, I've done one show in two years and I've been doing it for two years or I've or, booked, 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 booked. Right, right. Well, and to be fair, I didn't, 2021, I didn't book, 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 book. I think I did four shows in 2021. See, same. Too. It's, I, we have a very similar trajectory. Yeah. It's like, but they're great. It's always fun. No, correct. Like, uh, don't get me wrong. We've always had good audiences in those shows. Mm -hmm. uh, but 2022, I... That's, I mean, I've touring gig, another gig, gig buzz. amen. Like, it's been, and it's the same. Like, I told you outside, I was like, I'm seeing you everywhere, and it's just so fun because we're Instant. growing. I know, I love it. So, how did you get involved with being in Cheese Man? Okay, great. That's a good story. So, I actually met, um, when I had done my first parody called I Like My Fat. Um, one of their interns um, reached out to me and said, hey, I work with Bean and Cheese Met, but this is aside from that. I just would like to meet you. I have some project coming up that I I think you'd be great in. And so anyway, she had told uh, Samantha and Nina Duran about about me. And um, they're like, hey, bring her out to our um, hood rat video, Fiesta hood rat video. I was actually about eight, seven, eight months pregnant at the time. Okay. So, so I was the pregnant hood rat in the music video, but I was all down for it. And from that moment, Samantha and I just hit it off and we're like BFFs. Like we're just really so compatible uh, business wise and creative wise and our drive. It's just, it's really fun. So that it just all went uphill from there. That's stunning. Yeah. 
All right, it's cool. It's cool to have these relationships with people because you just don't know when we can use not and I don't mean to say the word use, no, but when literally. we can utilize, maybe that's the word, utilize each other for a project or how we want to uh, give a message or whatever. It's it's fucking awesome, dude. No, like it's I feel like it's like we're all part of the same comedy class. Yes. And so we're all trauma bonded by the fact that we're all starting out together. Yes. Well, have you noticed that everybody's so nice? Yeah. Or have you had drama? I haven't had drama. Well, well there, I mean, there was kind of drama, but I didn't. It wasn't involving me. Or well, that's good. Yeah, it was about. That's good. I don't even other people. Remember. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like. Well, that's weird, but it doesn't involve me. Yeah. So I mean, no, like, keep it moving. Yeah. Well, I've had I, everybody's been very welcoming to me, and I hope I I can tell that you've had that same experience. And the thing is, is that it's it's and I've had some a couple people have told me, you know, hey, you know, you're kind of coming onto the scene, you're doing these big gigs already, and you know, people that have been doing this shit for years are a little like, what? Get the fuck? better. And I, and I just I don't know what to, I don't know how to respond to that. I really don't know what the hell to say because I'm just like, I, I'm sorry. Everybody's journey is different and this is just what happened. And it's just like the luck of the draw. Like you can't help. Like, right. Like just like the lottery, things. honey. Oh, yeah. And it's like, I feel like too many people care about what other people are doing and don't focus on themselves. I always say I'm stunning and beautiful and gorgeous. But that's. And you are. No, but that doesn't have anything to affect you. Right. So when I say I'm beautiful, it's not saying that she's ugly. It's saying. I'm beautiful right. and she's beautiful, but I, for me to function, have to say I'm beautiful and hype myself up. And a lot of people say, if you're getting these gigs, well, what about me? Instead of like, no, 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 I'm proud of my gigs. I'm proud of myself. And I'm not saying, ha, 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 you're not getting bullshit. You know what I mean? It's Absolutely. all too many people um, internalize bullshit. Well, and I think it's a part of taking it, per they take it personal. Which is weird, because like, I'm don't. like, it doesn't It doesn't make any sense. It's not. Luckily, I haven't received that many comments like that. Um, That's I, just I've a strange, like, don't tell people that. That's yeah, rude. Uh, some people, I, some people just don't have that filter, right? But, other than that, it's I so welcoming. People have been so welcoming with me, and and hey, Chona, let me sit down and help you with your set, like shit, like that, dude. It's been really, really See, that's nice. Stunning. Like I've had the moments where I've done gigs, and you could tell that some of the straight old white guys or straight old guys in general, like, what's this bitch doing? And then I talk, and they're usually fine, or it's just not for them, which is understandable. Which is I'm understandable. very, yeah. I'm pretty niche and pretty like risque, but fuck it, I, I like what I like. Did it when I saw you perform. Remember when you got off stage? I like grabbed you and was like, "Holy shit!" I love you so you much. blew me away. Thank I you was so much. actually, and I'd only seen you perform once, so and that was the, the the first and last time I've seen you perform. Which we need to change that. Come see me lip sync. My y'all need to come to my shows, yes. like the drag shows, because comedy's great. I love comedy. Please book me. Um, but Bookable. it's a completely different skill set. What I do at the okay. shows, because it's more lip sync dancing and it's not necessarily funny like forever i had a really big um issue reconciling my drag persona with who i am as a person because i'm funny uh, but my drag wasn't always funny i got it yeah like i'm more glamour and that's always okay. been my gig like glamour and doing my thing i've been getting more i'm funny when i would be on the mic but my performances would just be like serious or dramatic or well see and that's what i was expecting when i saw you i was expecting it to be very glam oh, very always glam but and it was kind of tacky and it was <laughs> needs like, to be I'm, tacky don't describe like i don't misunderstand i i was like oh shit this is badass and then you started doing comedy and i was like this is something different this is something I've never seen before. And I don't know. Maybe there's more people out there who do the dragon stand up. Kind of. I don't know. I didn't know. I didn't know that. They do a little like there are a few entertainers in San Antonio and um, they're pretty good. Gosh. Well, we should do more. I agree. You were hilarious because you did jokes, but then you started fucking singing, but the DJ kept messing up the music. Oh my that God. was that night. That's Bless right. Bless Severiano's heart. He was playing DJ and Pobrecito. it's hard. I don't, it's if, difficult. if you ever hear um, tech issues at a place and it's like family run, yeah. we'll say family run yeah. because we're all yeah, family. Mom pop. Yeah. Mom Running pop. our own shit. It's yes. kind of hard if you've never done it before. So like, oh. Yeah, and oh. I remember when I walked in, that was exactly like the disclaimer. Just want to let you know, I'm running the sound, and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I was like, fantastic. Um, but 
either way, well, what do we do on stage? And you, you still turned it out. Yeah, you got like I think going. the song started, it stopped, and then he ended up starting it over. So you just did it again. And yeah, I was like, oh, they here fucking we go. live. We'll just do it. <laughs> It was awesome. It was, it was awesome. good. So tell me about your tios. You like the tios? Yes, bitch, because I remember those guys. I love that you say that because I, I we get that a lot. It was a little like, okay, the idea of doing tios just literally came because we watched, and I don't know if you guys know this, but there's a guy in San Antonio. He is, he is Tio Chuntaru. He is Tio Chuntaro, and he is a, a genuine guy. Like He's a real guy, and he is that Tio. He's that deal. Okay. And so Samantha and I um, had an idea to do a sound bite of his TikTok and, you know, tag him and all that stuff and just and, and act like him and his brother that were having an argument about <laughs> beer or some shit like that. And from there, uh, Samantha goes, hey, while we're in this getup, let's just go live and see what happens. Okay. And that's it. The Theos were born from there, and it's actually become one of the most favored characters that her and I do that people ask for time and time again. Well, because we know people like that. And that's what we hear. It's like, I've hung out with those dudes. I've I've chilled with those dudes, and I'm like, I grew up with those dudes. So, yeah, it's exactly why it's so easy for me to just play that man. It's. I think, I don't know. I love it because it's funny because it's authentic. It's like... And the joke isn't, ha ha, I'm in drag. Like, I relate with that mostly about you and we bond over this. Yeah. Is, uh, the comedy isn't about us, how we're dressed. Right. It just so happens to be a vehicle for us to do stuff. Yes. And yes. you look so good. Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, likewise, honey. My favorite drag king. We're in good company. Well, and, and it's funny because I've gotten a lot of, um, I've had a few girls say they have crushes on Theo Chon. And I'm like, hey, yo. Okay. Hey, for like. Um, $84, you can enter a raffle to go on a date. <laughs> Imagine! Oh, that would be a great idea. Samantha, are you listening? Wait, you know what y'all need to do? The bean and, or like, well, is it associated with bean and cheese? I know that's a stupid question. No, it's actually not because I am under contract with bean and cheese meth. So there are certain things that bean and cheese meth owns that's not Chona E stuff. And this is something that was like creatively birthed between This was between us. So okay. we actually signed a contract between her and I. Everything split 50 50. So we own Theo's 50 50. Because I think I should start like, like a have a big party where people can come, but it's more interactive than just like a. I mean, there like could a be show a show, or something, but no. it would be you um, photo op with the Dios. Uh, yes, I got to one. Oh, Jose, not one. Yeah. Everybody like just as characters, right? But it's like either a prom or a party or something. That's but then cute. also the show. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like you get to meet them, but like yeah. as their personas. You know, and I kind of struggle with that because we we kind of toss up sometimes whether or not we would charge for meet and greets, you know, maximize on that opportunity to do meet and greets. And um, and like I said, we we've all kind of toggled back and forth and and I just feel like let's not do that way too fast. That's just my you know, thought process. Um, let's wait until like we're in the name of Jesus. Eventually we'll get super, super big to where it's like, okay, I mean, at this point it makes sense. And I'm like, let's not, because the fans that we have right now are local. We, I mean, they turn out in San Antonio. I don't want to turn them away and say, you got, I got to charge you money right now to come and meet I feel me that. later. You know what I mean? So I, I want to show them the love. And once it starts getting on a scale that it's become, okay, well, we can't have three hour waits for a meet and greet. Now maybe it makes more sense to charge. Come on, Disney. Right. Y'all go y'all can't wait at Magic Time Machine. <laughs> <laughs> there was a line, dude. Bitch, so uh, in the magical like, studio. Okay, no, they have a uh well, I don't even know what characters are there. Um Well And I always bring it up the fact that the last time I was there was like four years ago when our we took our drag sister to go hook in Castroville because then she used that money to take us to Splashtown yes. and then we went to Magic Time wait, Machine. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Your drag sister, you took her to go hook. Yeah, because she that's how she paid her bills. <laughs> it was great. But it was her who will remain nameless, my sister Natasha, who was here last week, and Georgia's from RuPaul's Drag Race, because that's my other sister. I love and this. We drove to Castroville, dropped her off in the woods. It was like 9 p.m., went to go to Walmart, because we were like, whoa, whoa, wait. It, she'll either die or she won't. Because <laughs> it was literally, we dropped her off in the middle of these woods yeah. in Castroville. Yeah. And well, uh, 20 minutes went by. Uh, we went, got her, and... Then the next day, came. she took us to Splashtown. No, literally, she did it because we were just at, hanging out at her apartment eating pizza. And we were like, oh, we want to do something tomorrow. And she's like, well, if you take me to go see this guy, I'll take you to Splashtown. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, yeah. immediately after, we went to Magic Time Machine because my drag sister, my other sister, Natasha, was working there and got us a discount. 
And so that's the and last time I was there. everybody's fucking happy going down the slides. <laughs> Baby. Well, what was Splash it? Splashtown. Uh, Splashtown was shit, but I miss Which it. Which doesn't exist anymore. No, dude. I know. That's why I'm like, I'm. nobody liked it, but I'm upset we can't complain about it yeah, anymore. Well, <laughs> right. Like, there's there's no more bits for that. But not only that, it's uh, it was sponsored by Big Red. Where the Baby fuck with the fucking you? cans. The special cans with the silver on it. Uh-huh. Oh. Oh, we would be in line with our cans of Big Red. Uh huh. Absolutely, we wanted that five bucks off. Oh my God! What's your favorite soda? Ooh, Coke Zero. Oh, bitch. Yeah, and it's not because I'm like I'm just fucking skinny. Rich Coke Zero. I just di- I stopped drinking soda for such a long time that anytime I crave something sweet, I'm like Coke Zero. See, I've never been real picky with the dark ones. Like uh, Pepsi, Coke, Dr. Pepper, interchangeable. But my yeah. favorite, the goat, and you can get it at Chipotle, which is why I love Chipotle, is Pib. Mr. Pib. Mr. Pib's my all time favorite. And you can't, they need to Don't make bottles of it. Mr. Pib. Yeah, you're right. It's so good. It's not as aggressive, like acidic wise. Yeah. But it's got the sweetness of Dr. Pepper without all that, like, tang or burn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> have you, um, have you, do you remember Fructopia? Uh uh-uh. uh. You don't remember? Wait, how old are you? 28. That's why. How old are you? I'm fucking 38. <laughs> Bitch, you look good. We're te- ah! you, she drinks we're, water. We're 10 years apart. Okay. That's crazy. That's You're wild. like my niece's age. That's why we fucking vibe, dude. Hello. Fuck yeah. You need, go, you need to come party with Dia, Chona. Bitch, right? please. No, me watching your lives of y'all watching the football game. Just, oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's I what live. we do. It's stupid. No, it's because ridiculous. it makes me jealous of growing up around, like, seeing how I grew up as opposed to, like, other people. What we're doing? No, because when I was little, they'd be like, don't cuss around the kids. And you see this little girl in one shot doing, or, like, who was it that drew balls in the Oh, my kids drawing. I'm like, look at my brother. He's so fucking cute. Fucking no, but who drew balls of Oh, dick? my brother. And then just, in, by the game, fuck. Fuck yeah! Fucking get him! And I was like, I wish that was I'm my I'm like, there's childhood. always one uncle. Because my brother fucking comes out and brings the girls. He's so sweet, by the way. He's really good with the kids. But he brings out um, crayons and puts a blanket out. And then he brings out chalk for them to be entertained. Because he invited us to his house to watch the Astros. And so he does that. But then he grabs the chalk. <laughs> And he draws a fucking penis. I mean, if he brings it, he can draw what he wants. Uh, I mean, let's get real. And I already knew. I was like, he's like, can I have the chalk? And I'm like, I already knew it. I'm like, motherfucker. And I was like, I literally went, ah. So then he's all, he draws the ball, the balls in the penis. And then he's like, and then here's the face. So then he like fixed it. But then my, my three-year-old's like, that's really good, Uncle Sal. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay, so I'm not really big into sports because uh, the last yeah. time I was was when Ginobili was still part of the Spurs. Me too. So it's been a minute. When you could go to City Base and watch the Spurs. Do you the, remember that? Well, I didn't live here at that time. <gasps> Where are you from? I'm I'm from San Antonio, but I my entire 20s, like that whole decade, I was living in New York and Los Angeles. Oh, rich. Rich, I want to go to either. No, bitch, but I'm I like, had three jobs in LA. It was it was bad. <laughs> okay, no, but you could go to City Base Cinema and go watch the Spurs game when they were in the uh, finals. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, so we would go, and they wouldn't charge you just by concessions, and so we would just go to City Base and watch. And then because it was on military, you just when we won. But now that I remember. So I, remember I love everything. all sports except for golf. If I'm there, so with the Astros, when they said they were going to. World Series? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I don't know a lot about sports. (laughs) Baby, when they went to the World Series, it felt like there was more that needed to come. Like, I didn't realize it was the next game. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But doesn't it feel like it's... Yeah, I was like... They won. They're done. they're done. And that's it? All of a sudden, I just got excited on that game. It was the final game, and they won the World Series. But it was so quick. It was. It kind of felt that way. But good for us, because we weren't invested in, like, having anxiety the whole time, like real fans. Yeah, I just know people We just came in at the tail end, and we're like, oh. And then finding out, like, somebody threw something at Ted Cruz, and it hit him in the head. Thank God. That was funny. I loved it. I like that comedy. And good. No, and then the guy was like, I wanted him to chug it. I'm like, that's a good defense. I think we should bail him out if there's a thing. Like, it was great. Yeah, That was a good comeback. Should have been a brick. Uh. <laughs> no, but I know shit about sports either. And you know the Theos, they fucking talk about football. Oh, all so the you're time. just. Oh, I'm just talking goes shit. Goes and reads a wiki, wiki page well, before I, it filming. It's funny. I just call my brothers and I'm like, okay, what are the stats with the Packers right now? Like, what's going on? And they're like, oh, well, this, 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 and this. And, that. and so then I'll throw those little ad libs, but the rest, I'm like, did you see that play over there? About the way? He, he said it to the 50 yard line. And then he took it to the right. And then that's it. And I'm not saying nothing. So, fun fact, when I was a senior and we were doing the, what was it, some field day thing, 
feel day. They decided to make my gay ass the um, announcer to what was happening on the field. And mind you, I was like big in theater, but shy when it came to everybody else. So I just started talking shit about, Please show and me. the ball's going on this side. <laughs> and now it's going on. Ooh, I hope this isn't your career because you just dropped it. Like stupid shit. Oh, he made a point. I'm sorry. He made That's a point. Like, I think he did good, but it wasn't clean at all because I was I like developing that. it. But like, oh, oh my goodness. So what's your favorite food? Because Thanksgiving's coming up and not just Thanksgiving in general. Like what's your favorite in food? In general, just everything. Um, I love burgers. Oh. I'm a burger girl. My my Whataburger order is, it's bad. I'm a fucking fat ass. I love to eat. So it's uh, the number two double, and that's the double meat. Number two with double cheese, lettuce, pickle, pick, no, lettuce, mayo, and ketchup and cheese only. So how's your heart, poor heart dealing with that cholesterol? Oh, actually, honey, I just had my, 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 my yearly checkup with the doctor and my numbers were good. Okay. Okay. My doctor can't count that high. Uh, <laughs> my Whataburger order is the number one, to buns toasted both sides, no veggies, extra mustard. You do mustard. Texas toast? No, regular. You can get the regular buns toasted if you double sides if you do the app. And then large fry, large sweet tea, and a small chocolate shake. Okay. The regular, How's your cholesterol? Uh, baby, I don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm alive. You're like, don't you see my eyes are yellow? Okay, yeah. bitch. But I don't even wear yellow. I love the color, but because of how no, I've been doing beautiful. my makeup. Thank you. I literally haven't worn yellow in like five years because I did it and it made my skin look weird. And I was like, I can't no, do welcome this. Welcome back. Thanks. Welcome I was obsessed. Um, no, uh, <laughs> my all-time favorite kinds of food is Italian. Ita Italian. 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 Um, father, son, and house of yes. Gucci. Bitch, that movie was trash. Dude, somebody said um, house of, of random accents. Oh, that Baby. was at the Oscars. That oh. was at the Oscars. Wanda Sykes said that. That movie was so bad. And I love Lady Gaga. She's my... I like, love Lady who's Gaga. Who's your diva? My diva? Because, you know, like people have Madonna or yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's your diva? Because mine's Gaga. Well, I think that's your generation's. I mean, it just makes sense. But mine would be Madonna. Oh, Sunny. Bitch. Yeah. Okay, so this ties but into the parody. But now she embarrasses me a little bit. She's, she look, okay, so we need yeah. to talk about her Let's filler. Let's talk about it. Because she's got that old school trans drag queen pump where if you've, have you seen a lot of drag shows, right? Yes. You know the old school queens? The old school silicone is cheek. Cheek, oh, yes. chin, yes. lip, and forehead. Yes. Yes. And she looks great from the front. And then she turns to the side and her face is out to You're here. Like, and I'm like, oh, mama, from the front. Have you Dream seen lighting. that she got her ass done too? Nobody should have seen that. It's, oh, it's fucking bad. And then she dude. might be a lesbian. If you weren't looking pussy what? in the 90s, no one cares. No, but she was. She had this very risque documentary that I remember oh, seeing. Oh, Truth or Dare is my favorite. Anytime I feel like I'm being a bitch, I watch that and it bitch, makes I me feel seven, better. I was seven watching fucking Truth or Dare and I was all... That whole, I'm a big deep... Di I believe in uh, idol worship and deep diving into this. So like, I love Her that. sex book is everything. The song of hers that came out on my birth, like my actual birthday when I was born was Human Nature. And it's always okay. been kind of a mantra that I've... Yeah. Uh, identified with because I loved it. Um, mm. No, but, oh, my goodness. So this ties into everything, and I really hope you've seen this movie because if you haven't, I've been a film. be sad. Have you seen Weird, the Al Yankovic story? It just came out. Just now? Like, it came out last week. No. Oh, you need to see it. It's on Roku. Okay, I have to. It's Daniel Radcliffe playing Weird Al. Stop! And Evan Rachel Wood oh, playing Madonna. I've seen the previews of it. It's way more bonkers than you could think. There's they like go to okay, this isn't spoilers, it just tells characters. Yeah. They go to a poor a pool party at Dr. Domino's house, and there's Elvira, Divine, Grace Jones, Pee Wee Herman, Gallagher, who just passed away yesterday. So dope. Aww. Yeah, I was wild. And uh, are you a superhero fan? <sighs> okay, so the Batman animated series, Kevin Conroy, the goat Batman, uh, passed away, and I was like, oh my god, he was only 66. <laughs> And he was gay. Batman was a fudge packer. You and I'm me? like loving it. That's the gay agenda. Me sitting here like this. Put insert question marks like over my head. Okay. Well, no. And it's the greatest animated show too because Luke Skywalker voiced the Joker. And oh. who is like, it's one of the most beloved versions of the Joker because okay. it's great. And it was originally supposed to be Tim Curry. Sorry. I know a lot of stuff about that. That's him. awesome. <laughs> but no, my favorite food is Italian food. And <laughs> I love chicken parm because when I realized you could combine... Uh, fried chicken and spaghetti. Sold. It just takes too fucking long to make. Where's at the home. best place you get chicken parm out here <laughs> in San Antonio? Oh, <laughs> uh, Guillermo's. Have you been to Guillermo's? I. Where's Guillermo's? Uh, Macola. 
No. Have you been to Umberto's? Nope. We'll, ha- we'll have to try. We'll Where's have to do that? A Where's that? Culebra. Oh my god. But Guillermo's literally. Culebra on 410. I really just like the chicken parm. Their Alfredo is kind of meh. But I mean, it's what they're. It's good. It's good. It's good. Or Olive Garden. I'm trash. So am I because I. If you take me to a real ass fucking Italian restaurant and you give me chicken Alfredo, I'm like, this is disgusting. I prefer ragu and a, and a fucking Oh, jar. no, prego, mama. Oh, prego. Ragu's too watered. No, uh, well, whichever one. I'll, I'll eat them both. Oh, and, uh, I'll even do fucking Hill Country Fair, baby. And it's good. Okay. Uh, random shout out, spaghetti shout out to uh, Devin uh, Binish. I don't want to fuck up her name because I went to a comedy show and it was, that was the one we were at. That's the one we were at. There yes. was food. Yes. They had the idea to make food and she made this spaghetti nice. and meatballs and those weren't tiny little. Oh, that's right. I it was but yes. so good. Devin, I love you. It was a freaking Please. comedy show potluck. Devin, you're also on the list. Please that's come. Cute. But no, her food was great. I love oh, that. She Devin, knew how to cook. with the short hair. Yeah, purple. She's fucking hilarious. I love her so much. I love she her. She reminds me of a certain Disney villain and I don't know how to tell her without it making her upset. Oh, no. We'll say it Because now. I mean it with love. Because she means it with love. So yeah. say it now. Madame Medusa from uh, The Rescuers. Wait, the rescuers. The redhead with the alligators. She with the little mouse, the little mice. I remember the rescuers, but I'm, the, I can't picture her. She kidnaps the little girl, and she's got like green earrings, red lipstick, and the short red hair. And she rides on her alligators. Oh my! God. I'll show you a picture after you'll yeah, get. It. But I love you so much. I look like Ursula. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a Disney girl? Uh, I don't know. It just depends. Uh, old school Disney, yeah. What was your favorite? Um. Let's see. Let's see. I, 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 very cliche, but I'm a toss up between um, Beauty and the Beast and Little Mermaid. <gasps> Little Mermaid's my favorite, but Beauty and the Beast has better stories. Have you seen the Beauty and the Beast Christmas one? I didn't do it. <gasps> it's very good. Is it? It's got. Um, I don't know if you're. Well, you're a theater girl. Uh, it's got Bernadette Peters playing in Love Christmas Bernadette Angels, Peters. and she sings. Okay. Um, Tim Curry plays the villain, which is I the pipe organ. I love Tim Curry. He sings. He sings. He's already passed too, right? N- he's getting there. Oof. He's practical. He's a, honey, one bad sneeze and he's gone. <laughs> No. I like Tim Curry in Home Alone too. I think I've seen that one. Yeah, he was the butler. I love. He's in Tim Curry's the Grinch face, right? The Grinch face guy. I I'm relating that to Home Alone too. He makes like the Grinch smile. Oh looks, yeah, it, right, right. Okay. Okay. I <laughs> I saw the first one and then like the third one, but I haven't. I vaguely remember. Did Macaulay Culkin do a third? No, he wasn't in that one. Oh, it was but a they made kid. it. It was a little with the kid bowl with cut. The bowl. I couldn't. It was bad. It was. I wouldn't have done it. But no, Tim Curry's in one of my all time favorite movies. Uh, Clue. Love him in that. Didn't see Clue. You should. It's great. If you like Didn't stupid comedies, it's the best. Love that. Battling constant. Oh, love Spaceballs. Spaceballs. Mel Brooks yeah, is the go. Yeah, that's that's a good. I want to do Dot Matrix so bad. Virgin Alarm. Virgin Alarm. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what about, um, I love those 80s movies, like the old, the old ones. What about Hello Again? Do you remember I that one? I know that one. Hello Again, it's with Shelley Long. And but she's she, in almost all of my favorite movies. Yeah, well, it's Shelley Long, and she um, passes away because she chokes on a chicken bone at a party. And her sister is a, like, um, the Necromancer. ones that read the globes. Oh, a fortune teller. She's like a fortune teller who does like spells and shit and she brings her back to life. And when she comes back to life, it's been a year since her passing and her husband moved on with her best friend and everybody can see her like she's literally back from the dead. It's a good one. It's a good movie. I need to see it. I loved her in uh, um, True Beverly Hills. Yes. I want her outfit. I quote it all the time. You should do something with that. I love it. No, and I I always quote with my friends when I'm stressed Beverly out. Beverly Hills, what a thrill. It isn't over until we sing Kumbaya. <laughs> that one, yes. I love both Brady Bunch movies because she's Mrs. Love Brady, Brady and those. Bunch. Yes. But those movies are demented and I love it. Love it. I made my friends watch it. The incest in the second one. With the uh, with uh, Marsha and, and Greg. Greg. And, bitch. Guess who Greg voices? Prince Eric in The Little Mermaid. That's his voice. Are you serious? Uh huh. Greg? Yep. He's the he's Prince Eric. Bruh. Right. Hey, and how iconic was it that um fucking RuPaul made a cameo? Oh, and both of them. And both. Stupid. She was Rid- the teacher. Oh, I love it. It's ridiculous. You see Money Pit? I haven't seen that one. Money Pit. This is Shelley Long as well, oh. and Tom Hanks. 
Oh, I need to see. see he's kind of, I don't know. I liked him back then. He's the Huckle- more comedy. He just reminds me of the human version of Huckleberry Hound, and I can't get that out of my head. Yeah. So he's, because if he went in a movie and went, oh, shucks, and that's his character the done. whole movie. Yeah, you're like, I can't. Forrest Gump was great. <gasps> Forrest Gump. And then Castaway was all right. Oh, God. Wait, but what about uh, Captain Phillips? Did you I, watch that? I remember when it was in the news and I felt like the movie was too soon because I felt like, we already know what happens. He flies into geese and goes in the... the that's not a movie. Wait, Captain... No, this is the one where they steal his boat, his oh. ship. <laughs> oh, I am the captain now. I am the captain now. I haven't now. seen it, but I saw that part. Dude. Because I quote that too. You're, I don't believe he dr- he he flew his plane into the river. But he was in that movie. He was. And I was like, what's the, p- we know what happened. It's that, what is it? 45 minutes of him. Oh, God. It's going down. Oh, it's God. going Very down. slowly. Let me not fuck it up. Oh, God. Hey. It's, <laughs> it's kind of like the Kardashian seasons this season. Do you watch? I've never seen an episode. Not one? Nope. That's my guilty pleasure, bro. I fucking watch. I watch that and I watch the uh, Housewives franchise. I watch Drag Race and that's pretty much it because I try not to watch TV. Yeah. I don't have a TV in my room. Good for you. Because then I would never do anything. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, I. there was a time that I was just like all TV that I would watch. And now, I mean, oh, I watch I'm so everything busy, on my phone, <laughs> my phone really? or my laptop. Yeah. Oh but just so that way, then I can like, especially now that I have wireless headphones, which I know everyone's having it, but I'm always late to everything. Um, <laughs> now I can just have stuff I like noise on while I yeah. sew or while I'm doing stuff. I love that. Because like I'm like. I really want to get into anime, but I can't do the subtitles because then I have to sit there and watch the whole time. And read the entire and thing. I yeah. don't have time to binge all this bullshit. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's hard. Oh. <laughs> what, is, what is it called? First World Problems? Honestly. Oh. Did you just hear her? She's like, I don't want to have to read the subtitles. Baby. No, but I can't just because usually it's my background noise while I do stuff. So I like... Yeah, that's the only reason. Got it. I, I don't have enough time You're to pay off. attention. I barely have enough time to do everything I want and sleep. I haven't been to well, bed yet. You create your own costumes. Most of them I try. Um, that interspersed with when I can afford it, I'll get stuff made. Um, but it's so expensive, but it's worth it. Absolutely. Well, how is material now that there's a uh, fucking massive inflation? This was 25 a yard. But it looks like it, so I'm not that upset yeah, about it. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. But I also make stuff out of, like, I just bought this $5 fabric of fabric shopping before I came, and I'm going to make this stunning. It's about construction. I don't necessarily, I care about this because it looks exactly it's like I want beautiful. it to. And I'm very, it's the business of drag. Christy Waters, my yeah. evil drag mother, taught me the um, uh, business of drag. So it's like, this was all bought with tips from one show, from the show. Very so smart. I put it right back into it and it wasn't my pay. The pay goes to bills and then whatever I make in tips, I can invest in costumes and it really doesn't hurt me. I love that. Because I still get my paycheck from my other job that yeah. goes to bills. and That's how it works. I mean, like whenever I do my merch, uh, I sell my merch sales on top, like whatever it was that I made for performing, but then my merch sales, I use that money to invest in more merch. So I get See, it. Yeah. If you want to get into entertainment, like it would behoove you to learn a little bit about business, business in general true. or how to be decent with money just to keep yourself afloat. Yeah. Um, especially uh, drag queens who do it. I, but this is going to sound so horrible. A lot of queens want to be visible and seen, seen, seen. But what's the point of you posting a video of you doing the same exact number in the same exact costume at the same exact bar? over and over again on different nights doesn't really make sense well like, it's, it's very competitive what it is that you guys are doing because y'all are showing up every single time yeah so to your point if, if that's your niche but like maybe stand out do have your looks but do come out once in a while be a little more selective i know it's really hard to start out but just because it's I always say the audience doesn't care if your cat died. The audience they're there to see a show and if they're gonna see it over and over yeah. and over again you kind of got to do something new. Switch it up a little bit. Or have a gig where your aesthetic is one specific look and then that's the brand. Like yeah. if you yeah. can make that your gig, well, go and for somebody it. Somebody does that already here, right? Somebody has that one specific Dendra brand. Dendra Lahefa, but Dendra she can Lahefa. she alternates. She's great. You should oh. meet her. She's uh, a Okay, look. I would love She's a hoot. I, I've actually I believe I've I don't think we met, but um She threw tortillas out of her boobs. Early, yeah. Back in early 2000, 2000, when did I got married? I got married two thousand eight. So two thousand seven and two thousand eight, I performed at um, Corniation. Corniation. Yeah, she was there, and blacked out her. teeth with yep. the yep. rollers. I met her. I met her there. Yeah, she's fucking hilarious. Really, really funny. 
a beast and so well, chill and out of drag. They do the coordination. They throw tortillas in the audience. Like they're throwing them out. Well, she the still does it at the gigs. I and I was just like, it. this fucking bitch. It's really clever. My favorite part about San Antonio is how much the culture is infused in every aspect yes. of like everything. Yeah. I love it. It's yeah. everything. That's part of that's part of why I like to do the deals because it's just relatable. Um, it's exactly what we've grew up seeing. Like you said, I hung out with dudes like that before. I've met dudes like that. And I feel like there's not a lot of that type of comedy out there anymore. It's like kind of, be, I feel like it's dying a little bit. And so it just feels good to bring back that nostalgia to people. And they're like, oh, I remember. When it's so specifically San Antonio. Like, yeah. not the Valley. Not It's just, you <laughs> ready to fight, but won't because you're at a party. Yeah, absolutely. very that energy. I feel like most characters in San Antonio are very sweet, very nice, but you could tell that they could throw down if they had to. Oh, if we we got to get down, girl. yeah, yeah. And down. I say that because for in general, like a fiesta, everyone's there to have a good time and kiki and have a lovely yes. moment, but they will beat you up if you talk slick or act like. Well, and that's we don't take bullshit. But yeah, not only that, but it's like if you bump somebody or you this or you look at it's just crazy. You just gotta, you just gotta have go and have a good time. That's and lovely. if you're gonna go in with a bad attitude, then you're probably gonna get fucked up. No, and everyone's like, Austin's the party city. We're like, San Antonio has a month planned Literally, specifically for partying. We get where a week up. is off of school so people can get fucked up. Fucked up. And party. I'm like, Austin doesn't do that. Yeah, let's get real. Fight me. But also stay in Austin because we don't need inflation going up around here. Oh, no, <laughs> I'm we trying got to move enough. into the city. Yahweh, Yahweh. Beach. Oh it's my god. It's a lot. This inflation. Dude, I fucking bought a uh, one pound of fucking ground beef. I think it was like eight bucks, bro. Oh, shit. Dude, I remember when we used to buy it and my husband and I used to be like, the lean, the 100% no fat is three bucks. Let's just get the one pound that's full of fat for 99 cents. Okay. This See, was in fucking 2007, bro. I, it's crazy. Like, I don't know. It's Have you ever seen Arrested Development? No, I haven't. I'm I'm an asshole, but yeah, I haven't. I it, there's comedy nuggets. Just watch um, uh, compilations of Lucille Blue because she's like, they're she's rich and then they lost their money and she's like, well, how much could a banana cost? Ten dollars. <laughs> and so that's what I feel every time I go grocery shopping because yes. it's like, okay, my mindset is I need chicken, so I don't care how much the chicken's gonna cost. I mean, if it's like twelve dollars, I'm not getting it. But you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like chain having chicken. I need to go get it, so I'm not going to well, get it. Well, groceries used to be 150 a week before. Oh yeah, shopping with my grandma would be and her coupons, and she still has her basket, and she goes through all her coupons. Yeah, yeah, and I'd hate to be behind someone like that. Like fuck. Oh, and Wait. she would have them and organized <laughs> by what store we're going to. But this was still at the time when there was Super S, so you wouldn't have to go to H E B to go to S. It. Yep. Super S was a uh, small towns for me. Because I was from Flor I'm, I am from Floresville. Okay. Okay. So, we used so to that have, was Super S. Yeah. Yeah. And then sense. the tiny little Walmart, which had no groceries. And then even when we got the big one, my grandma was like, don't get um, don't get groceries at Walmart. It's Go too always expensive. And it's suspicious. Because she says um, she's had to, every time she's ever gotten meat, she's had to return it because it was fucked up. You know, I kind of feel that way, too. I feel like the, the produce and the meat at Walmart is just not... You go there grocery. for literally everything else. Yes, I'm if not you're that. in a hurry, then I suppose. But H E B, if you can find it, it's usually just always there. the freshest and the best. Oh my in goodness. my opinion, I wouldn't go buy some fucking strawberries from Walmart, bro. I, okay. I just wouldn't. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you're like, oh okay. <laughs> so you're bougie that way. No, no, no. Have you been to the gay H E B? Which is that one? The Central Market? No. <laughs> She said it's got a name. It's it, it, no. Gay H we call the gay H E B is the one by the quarry. You know, Why? surrounded because it's it feels gay. They have the <laughs> no. You've been there, right? I've seen it, but I've never been in. They have artisanal breads. They have artisanal desserts. It's got the low ceiling with the bat. Like done. Everyone's gonna look good in dim lighting. <laughs> It's got the partition. I d it's not the official gay H E B, and they probably don't want us calling it, but it feels like it should be the gay H E B. Endorse us, all right? Okay. Baby, I'm trying to get a sponsor of anything. Let's go. Anything works. Vagisil something, please. <laughs> I will talk about my dryness. Yeah, I'll talk I about my yeast infections. It. Baby. Let's get real. <laughs> oh my gosh, something funny. Speaking of yeast infection, my husband's gonna fucking kill me for saying this. <laughs> but so one time he had um he got really sick from his butt, and we thought that he had like the hemorrhoids. So we fucking bought those, those hemorrhoid suppositories because I Googled it. 
So I'm fucking, this is when you know you've been married, bitch. We in love. So I, he, he's on all fours and I'm fucking putting him. I do stuff like that normally and we aren't in love. So We're baby, that's how we have sex. We just love each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, he doesn't go, get anything up there. That's right? why they're so long. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, imagine. You're like, I'm all the way up to my elbow, honey. What was it? It's the stupid Bob the Drag Queen joke. But, um, yeah, I was fingering this guy and he told me to put my hand in, so I did. And then he told me to do my other one. And then he said, clap. And I couldn't. And then he was like, tight, isn't it? But he was just fucking with someone. You're a bitch, I'm in your rib cage. Anyway, so your husband's hemorrhoids. <laughs> How do you top that? So it's hemorrhoids. Bitch, so we're trying to put these suppositories in there. And we did the treatment. It was like a three-day treatment. Turns out we had to take him to a fucking GI doctor. Doctor, He actually had fissures. Do you know what that is? Yes, we get those. I've had those. We get those. I didn't. We didn't know. Oh, it's just commonplace. You see a little blood and you go, oh, I'm on my period. And they go, oh, fuck. And then you just Well, and I felt bad because we were making it worse by fucking stuffing those. Yeah. Stories, poor guy. Anyway, the story was funny. <laughs> Thanks for laughing. I love <laughs> Well, she told me outside we could talk about random things. And I'm like, I gotta go. But also unprovoked. <laughs> yes, unprovoked. <laughs> unprovoked. My magical talent. Yes, um, I love that. You did say that. You're like, sometimes people just say the fucking I love shit, it. And I don't ask them to. It's you my did favorite. Say that. I, I love, love it. That. No, but yeah, fissures are something. They just happen. Sorry, Bill. No, he, uh, the unspoken rule with gay sex is if you get something on it, you just say, you tap them on the shoulder and you say, hey, this is happening. Go clean up and we'll come back in five minutes. Like, go get a drink. Y'all are so nice. Well, because sh shit happens. Like, it's not like uh, we're. Literally. If you play at the dump, expect to get dirty. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's like, I know that's is. gross. You can clean a little bit, but like, ugh. Yeah. And it, shit happens at orgies, you know. I mean, what are you going to do? I don't, I've never had an orgy. I've gone to so many. Do you watch or you participate? Both. <gasps> how do you stay? I don't know. I like, I don't, I like the attention I got on me. Two so hands how do you stay and relevant? You Clearly. Just be good at what you do. Find the attractive one. And then if they want to go with me, I show them what my true talent is. That, um, baby, if I could hook, I'd charge per pound. <laughs> I'm a whole package, honey. Bitch, when I was in McAllen, somebody tried to offer me $190 to sleep with them. Stop. Yeah. And you said, okay. No, I said I didn't respond because why was it not 200 What made him knock $10 off? I'm That's not going to fucking haggle. Fucking Can point. you do 200 No, like, 195 Are you fucking taxing me, bitch? But he was at the show, so he tipped me like 50 but that's a different transaction. So like, Yeah, these are two different transactions. I'm not opposed to hooking. Sorry, my cousins and my aunt. But I'm not opposed to hooking, but like, if you don't make the deal correct, I'm not going to respond. I won't respond. I'm not haggling. No, honey, you are an a -list fucking hooker but also i don't do and i don't do much i'm mostly i'm boring yeah that's well, why now i, I, I am to too that's why my kids look like my husband only because oh i just fucking God. laid there like <laughs> when i was young i would throw myself at the <laughs> dick and now it's just like i, I can it go in my mouth that's it that's all i want to do like, and can i sleep while we're doing that too? i have i've fallen asleep when a guy fucked me twice once on purpose and once on accident you're like sorry yeah, once I was like, can I so take a nap? So the accident, was it because it was boring? Yeah, or it was you're small. Just fucking we, I tired? was at an or, or a uh, bathhouse, which is like an orgy yeah. that you would go. And you're like, um, uh. It was tiny, and I was thinking about what I was going to eat later, and I fell asleep, so he shook me, and I was like, oh, oh, ooh, ah, uh, ooh. And then the other time, his dick was huge, and I was like, you're real cute, but I'm very tired because I just got off work. And he was like, yeah. Um, so I took a nap and woke up four hours later, and he was still going. I was like, okay, and I went back to sleep for a little bit. <laughs> you're all good great. for you. Like, I think he had coke dick. Um, Wait, I, I uh, dated a guy that used to do that. and um, It's not it, fun. No, it never went up. Yeah, you just keep pulling. <sighs> yeah, it and gross. it doesn't, yeah, not a fan. Yeah, not either. Because uh, I don't even partake in it. So it's like, yeah. wow, yeah. that's it's weird. Gross. Do you know most, gay, well, not most gays, because that makes it seem like <laughs> four out of like five. everybody, yeah. No, but there's a high percentage of gays in this city that do meth. Yeah, and they do things called party and play. I or like if they're looking for ice cream on Grinder, that's what the ice. That's what they yeah. Or capital letters. So then, how does that work? Are they all like all methed out, fucking for hours? Yep, that's just vibrating. Scary. Please don't do drugs not, like that. Yeah, don't. They're not even thrusting. They're just vibrating. Yeah. Just, mm. <laughs> 
Which is wild because I'm like, I know all this from Grinder, but I'm like, straight people trying to hook up must have been wild. Wild. How long have you known your husband? See, I've uh, I've been off the market since I was 17, bro. Oh my God. High school sweethearts? Yeah, high school sweethearts. I mean, we did, we broke up a little bit, like uh, for about a year or so um, when I was living in LA. And uh, yeah, there ain't shit out there. Yeah. Yeah, there, I mean, he was the one. That's so cute. Yeah, he really was. I mean, I, I, my husband's fucking a gem. How many kids do y'all have? We have two. Oh, bitch. Do y'all want more? No, we're done, bro. Uh uh-uh. uh. Knock on wood. We're going to knock yes. on wood real quick. Yes. No, I, I, no, we're good. I'm 38 years old. Doesn't have anything to do with age. I just, I'm, I'm at a place that I'm like, okay, mommy wants to do her career. Like, I want. Mommy's fucking tired. Yeah, <laughs> enough. Go, Coco Melon. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, get out of here. You want an iPad? I'll buy you four. Um, yeah, no, I just would rather see what happens with this comedy, you know, and see where it goes instead I'm of pop out excited. more kids. And my favorite part is it's not just like um, we're not just waiting around. We're creating. Well, you're creating your own space and your own gigs and your own. Yeah, I'm trying to. Yeah. Thing. So it's not just like, a. well, I hope somebody calls me. It sure would be nice to do a show. You're actively working on making your own space and making yes. your own name in the industry, which I think is brilliant Thank and you. incredible. Yeah. No, I, I, you know, when after Chicago's uh, Laugh Factory performance, I'm like, okay, I really, really, really. Need Everyone to do keeps this. going and I need to go you just to, to go. take the pictures. You need to go. It's freaking, it's amazing. Y'all I just are, feel like I got blessed in there just sitting in that green room, fucking Richard Pryor's picture on stage. Uh, like, dude, come on. Who's it's your amazing. favorite comic? Ever, ever, ever. Yeah. Okay. So I remember I remember the Queens of Comedy. Okay. Um, Simone, Monique. I remember them. That's when I first saw women doing comedy. I saw it with them. Um, it's very cliche, I know. But it's because it's the style of comedy that I like to do. It's George Lopez. He's my all-time oh, favorite. Love. Because I, I like his stories. They were relatable. When he talked about the way his grandma would hit him. And the, the, the save me some bit that he does about save me a play. Save me some. Save me. I mean, it just was as if he was like my deal talking about my family. And so that's the kind of comedy that I like to bring on stage. And I feel like, yes, maybe there's other comics doing that. Latina comics doing that. <laughs> but I, I, I just feel like my um the way that i present it is very similar to the way george lopez would present it. and it's not because i'm mimicking him or anything it's just because that's who i am and that's how i'm telling that's what the story. you related to and that's like absolutely what inspired you to start yeah yeah that's stunning i know a lot of that i just i always remember his tv show because i always yeah. thought the actress that played his wife was so stunning so beautiful constance yes um, yeah constance selena's mom selena's mom <laughs> who the real. shady part is you know how she got that role because she auditioned she to trying, be selena yes she <laughs> like, tried, they're like you can be your mom that, 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 but i always thought her face was so beautiful and she's such a great comedic actress she is because uh my all-time favorite uh, comedian is Joan Rivers, the goat. Joan Rivers. Her method of delivery and her work ethic is something that really Ridiculous. inspired me. I mean, she was like, working till. Oh, I cried when she died. I was devastated. Absolutely. But she's the whole reason I was like, I, I want to do that. Joan Rivers is badass. She even had a fucking jost of Joan Rivers and just took it like a chat. Oh yeah, I just loved her amazing. mindset of her whole gimmick was. You're with your neighbor and they're saying what you're thinking, but you would never say out loud. Yeah. That was always, that was I was like, oh, I could do that. Bitch, same. Yeah. Down. No, and I can kind of see that a little bit now that you say that. Where like, your oh. inspiration's coming from. It was I like her that. and then even Phyllis Diller because her jokes are, I love Phyllis the, Phyllis Diller. Baby, her jokes are ridiculous. Um, Like, uh, my mother-in-law is so fat. Like, just stupid. Stuff like that. Yeah. And it's so Oh, ridiculous. And well, I, didn't um, she started on the roast? And I thought that she was like very like out there. I was like, fuck, she's so cutthroat. Um, Amy Schumer. I think she's she has moments of being funny. I think some parts. I've liked her saying more on the poo -poo roast. Pee -pee is not, not for, always going to be funny. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't necessarily like how she writes everything. Yeah. And it's a bit dry for me, but I do think she's very funny. Speaking of writing, how often are you writing? I'm not. I go up me and I neither. talk shit. Me too. I will think of something stupid and I may might write something down a little, but yeah. for the most part, I'm just like, <laughs> let's see what happens. Well, I mean, yes and no. I mean, I, I've I've building my set was literally that talking shit on stage, and then it just kind of developed every show, you know. But I have a whole bunch of shit that I've written, but now I'm like, okay, I'm at a point where if I <sighs> 
and I don't know how to say this without sounding like an asshole, right? But I'm at a point now, if I go to an open mic. You've got your. I got a following already. Yeah. Well, what does that look like? Like, And it's not even that I give a fuck what it looks like. But, okay, well, if I'm going to be at open mics trying new shit, then why the fuck are they going to pay for a ticket to come to the show? Because they're Is gonna... that stupid? Uh, I kind of get that. Is stupid? I've never done an open mic and I really want to, but I'm nervous. I did it so right before it. LOL. Not going to lie, because I had some new stuff. I, Dude, if to headline at LOL, and it's not that it's a requirement, but if I was going to be the headliner, my first headlining show there, I only had a, a, like, a literally 20 minute, comfortably 25 minute set at the time before the, and then the fucking shows are selling out. And I'm like, bitch, you need 40 minutes at least at the yeah. very least you can headline. So I needed to add more shit to it. And so, um, you know, I was talking to a few of the comics and I'm like, hey, I have this stuff. What do you think? They're like, you got to go try that shit at open mic. It's really going to help you gauge scary, super scary. And I'll never forget, you know, Al, right? I know of him. OK, so Al uh, had invited me to one or let me do a spot on one of his. It, he let me go up right away because um, I wanted to go in and out because I wanted to go hit up another one. I wanted to try to hit up as many as I could that night. And uh, I'm literally like two minutes in. He gave me five minutes. Then it's like five minutes. And I was like, how much time to have? He's like, fuck. Yeah, you know you're bombing. And then so we get off and he goes, it's a lot different when they're not here for you. He's like, this is what we call the gym. Mm. Work your ass off in here. Well, see, and that's why like I my open mic is when I do my shows in San Marcos because I'm hosting a drag show and performing and the audience changes because it's a college town love it and so i have to well regardless of whether or not they think i'm great i'm there for the hour making sure the show goes by right so i i have my the standard like if your gay makes some noise like what we all do yeah, that, well, yeah. and then i treat my jokes like mad libs so i know okay. how what the comedy structure is i can in or interchange the words and the punchline will still make sense in a different yeah, way yeah, that, yeah. That makes and sense. that's how i always have treated it yeah um but yeah, so I was like, I feel like an open mic would be like those shows where they just ended up at the bar and you got to entertain them. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, mine just kind of built over show after show. And it's like, OK, they got it. And because I filmed every set that I've done. So I go back and I watch what worked and what didn't work. So that's kind of helped um, to grow the set a little more. I love that. But I know. I love it. See, uh, my Let's first see I did my first comedy show and then the next time they made me the headliner and then the time after that was my own hour long solo show Love. and so like that was just like bits and then I uh, based it off of like stories and stuff like that yeah, and then yeah, I had yeah. lip syncing and so I'm trying to write my new one yeah because I want to do one I want to make a show that the comics want to come see <laughs> like I, love I want yes, everyone please. to come see like even this is geared towards I guess industry people that's yeah, weird yeah, yeah. no dude you but I always wanted to develop the show that comics would want to come see. I would love to come see a show. Bitch. I think because it would be multimedia and it would be super glam and really stupid. No, but that's great. I really, honestly, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. I really enjoyed what you did at the Kilos that night. Thank you so much. I, I, I'd fucking pay to see you do more time. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, hello. Well, maybe you'll see me at an open mic soon. But that's also the thing is because of work, trying because I do want to do it in drag. Yeah, I get it. Because imagine me going up there out of drag and it's my first open mic and then I bomb. And so it'll be stuck in my mind that, oh, I'm not funny unless I'm in this. Oh, you know yes. what I mean? So I'm like, I need to go like this so we know for sure. Yes. Because I, I still, will try it. Try it both ways. Have you ever had imposter syndrome? Um, Like Chona E and Joanna? No, imposter syndrome where they don't know. I'm getting paid and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. The very first time that I actually did a little bit of stand up, yeah. And I was like, fuck, they're laughing. Oh, I do that. <laughs> I feel that way with everything I do, including this, <laughs> unless I'm lip syncing. <laughs> but uh, where can we find you on social media? You can find me at Chona E210. Just Google it and it's everywhere. Okay. And what's your Cash App and Venmo so they can send you a little love oh if they gosh, feel like it? Oh my gosh, I love it. Yeah, Chona E. Uh, Cash App is dollar sign Chona E210. And your merchandise? I don't have that? Venmo, um, and then I don't have merch online right now. Oh, it's in person. Okay. Yeah, it's only in person merch. Look up the Not website the Spring. It'll change your life because everybody's it's, telling me about that. That's where I got this, and then my lovely okay. mugs that are for sale. And you can get slides with my logo on it. What? Yeah, I need to get them to model them, but okay, you can get so slides. Spring. Yeah, all right, and it doesn't cost it. you anything because it's all digital, stunning, and it's not sponsored, by the way, because I Lord knows You're I don't like, make sorry, money. Sorry, Spring. 
You can follow me on Instagram at the Bubble Babe. And if you would like to tell me how fat I look in this dress or no. any negative comments, you, if you tip me twenty dollars or more on Cash App or um, Venmo at the Bubble Babe sixty nine sixty nine, so you know I'm down for a good time. I will read it <laughs> on the pod because if you're gonna pay for hate, I'll read it. Why not? I'm so happy to Thank have you. you. I love you so much. Me. Thank this you for coming. Fun. Go follow her. And also Bye. follow Bean and Cheese Me because it's fucking hilarious. Thanks, guys. When's y'all's next show? This Thursday. <gasps> oh, I'm goodness. actually have a Bean and Cheese Me live show this Thursday at 7 o'clock. And then I fucking rush out of there and go to Upstage to do a charity show. Catch her gigs. Catch her gigs. Come on over. I believe that the the, the pre-sale tickets are sold out already, but uh, you can guys still come over at the door. It's actually a free show. It's donation only because it's for charity at and upstage this Thursday. That means you can afford to that spend means more than get a over ticket. there and give a tip. What's the charity for? What are they It's, it's for, for the next Riverwalk uh, Queen, but I believe that they're giving charity for scholarships. I just forget. Get what it's the all the gold is. earrings for lepers. Yes. <laughs> it's for my next Louis Vuitton bag. No, just kidding. Um, yeah, no, I, I know it's for uh, scholarships here in San Antonio. I just don't know the actual name. Oh, stunning. Come out. It's going to be stunning. Sorry for this. Um, I'll see you next week, my darlings. Goodbye. Oh.